Hello and welcome to UK Versus. Today we are going to be doing something very special. We are joined by the EU's best gin player in uh, Michael McEwen. And we're going to be talking about the previous Tekken 6 set, which came out around 2010, was it? Yeah, uh, uh, 2010, August, uh, 20, 2009, August. August 2009. And then we're going to be chatting about the, some great cards that came from there and how they impacted the standard at the time. And then at 8 o'clock our time, so in about 27 minutes, we're going to get the best gin player in the continent's opinion on new gin. And we are, as always, joined by Richard, who is here to scoff and laugh at retro cards. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, if we're talking retro stuff, I'll just sign off half an hour and come back. <laughs> um, now, were you not paying attention to the briefing when we were in this? <laughs> yeah, but I, I, that moment still needs to be able to make the joke on the stream. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, these cards are older than my child, just just as a context here. Um, yeah, a year older. That's, that's fair. So... Apple, Apple, we weren't playing the game back then. Paint us a word picture. What was the scene like? What was UFS like back in 29, 2010? Okay, so I joined uh, sort of 2011 after the game had died and been bought by Jasco. Um, imagine sort of there's very few resources to support, so you don't even know what, you don't even know databases or anything like that. Um, so you join the game, you've got no way of getting information. You find out you're a fan of Tekken and there's a Tekken set. Um, you know, you put, you're looking for information. Uh, again, up in there, um, buying all the packs. Uh, and you've got a set essentially that's 99 cards big. Um, five characters in the whole set. Um, and then some promos that you're not aware of how you get them. Um, Obviously, Jasco relaunches with Red Horizon. That's currently the uh, the main set you've got, um, alongside anything that was previous up till um, what you call the Five Point Shurikens. So anyone who's got some of the older cards should see there's a Shuriken in the bottom, and the number of points determines whether it was like a newer card or an older card, and that was how you determined what was standard. Um, so essentially, Tekken was the second to last set uh, released prior to Jasco taking over. Um, essentially, like I say, I when I was looking back at this when we spoke about doing doing this video, um, I was sat there going, "Well, it's it's a terrible set." And then I went and read through it, and the amount of cards that, like, if you compare them to what I've got now, game breaking. Um, you know, you've got a precursor to what Godzilla is in Kazuya, who does a board wipe by just discarding a character uh, in staging area. You've got King, who um, can freely play throws uh, every single turn from the discard pile without having to make a check uh, and discards momentum when it hits with said throws. Um, we've got uh, so many cool cards in terms of, um, what was there, Hunt, Hunt for Gin, um, which it sounds basic on paper. You call a card, if it uh, reveal top card of your deck, if it's there, uh, you draw it. But combined with cards we had back then, which allowed you to constantly see the top card of your deck, it was basically a free redraw every turn. Um, essentially, I um, I built Gin for my first Nationals, um, which was the 2011 Nationals. Um, and through, through sheer dumb luck, I'll openly admit that, somehow managed to top eight. Um, and uh, moving on to the guy who actually won uh, um, Essentially, back then, um, it was a much more basic game but with more powerful effects it was very you know you commit your cards uh you get a bit of damage buff badges more or less were basically putting numbers on the board rather than the other strategy uh, you tend to see um but you know it was um it was a lot much smaller uh uh player base as well i think our first nationals was 32 players if you compare that to what we get now just for regionals you can see the sort of a uh, big difference there yeah, it's about like what half, really. I mean, it's about yeah. half what uh, we got for the first when national which was webcam, which some people sat out because it was webcam. So that's really, yeah. really cool to see. 
This would be what was considered from the new like rating system. This was a small set, a one hundred card set with very limited resources. I said five characters. I can imagine them releasing a set now with five only five characters. Five characters, and when you look at them, they got a few of the interesting ones. But like Tekken Six had such a wide array of characters. Even in the set, they they represented some foundations that had characters on them that weren't in the set. Like. You know, apologies for the non fans, but Raven and uh, Jack come to mind. They both had foundations, but no character card. And then nearly half of the other characters that released alongside it were in promo form, uh, and that basically made up the entire Tekken uh, roster, basically. of I believe it was nine characters total, um, with, uh, I think, the only other characters outside of the core five were Jin, Hiachi, uh Steve Fox and one more, I think. I remember who though. Oh, so it was it wasn't a very big set. And like I say, you look back and you think, well, five characters, not very impacting. But then it had a lot of core staples that were used throughout standard until it rotated. No, that makes a lot of sense. So. Talk us a little bit more about Jin and what sort of drew you to Jin Kazuma as your character for Nats 2011. Um, yeah, so I mean, there's two reasons. One, I'd always played Jin as in Tekken. Um, Tekken's the only fighting game I play. I'm not hardcore in Tekken, but if I play a fighting game, it's going to be Tekken and Jin's who I play. And then, like I say, there was very little information back then. And so, I immediately wanted to play Jin, but didn't even know if he existed. You Googled him and you found these images, but you could not find the card. And when I looked it up, um, the few people I know were like, oh, it's really, really hard to get. And anyone who knows me said, you know, if someone said it's hard to get, I want it. Uh, especially when to play Jin, he's a stack of characters, so you need four copies of him. So I went out of my way to get him, managed to get my four copies. Um, essentially, like I say, the stack of character. Uh, it's got form commit, um, your checks get plus one for each copy of a character of Jin in your staging area. Then he's got enhanced discard a character in your staging area, your attacks get plus two for the rest of the turn, which you can, on a kill turn, discard all your copies of Jin um, to do mad damage. Um, additionally, uh, very fortunately in the set, Zuya's support very much worked alongside Jin, i.e. you've got a lot of recursion for characters. Um, Hunt for Jin was literally enhanced, discard a card, get a character back. Um, spinning Demon, an attack which had multiple. Every time it hit, got your character back to your hand to be able to replay. And so it had a very, um, it was very themed towards being stacked, and that support really helped him out. Um, I would have preferred probably a different version of Jin because that six Jin's the bad guy, so he's got the trench coat on and looking all evil. But still, you know, Jin's Jin. No, that makes a lot of sense. So was this back when Gage was around, or was this before the time of Gage? No, so Gage was a long time away. Um, you know, Gage... Uh, so For those that uh, I, Gage... for those that have like, joined with Attack on Titan or haven't been around long, uh, Gage is a ability that when you deal X amount of damage, which is the Gage value, value, you get to go get a character with your starting character's identity and put it into play. Yes, uh, from your discard or deck. Yeah. Well, no, that was a a long, long way off. Um, I mean, that was seventh cross, which was one of the last sets Gasco made before MHA. Um, so probably less last like seven years, maybe even more. I'm just reading it, and it does feel like a precursor to Godzilla without the destruction ability, because you've got a city-wide crisis on. No, see, because you got see rampage on face with the check hack for the turn, and then you just discard characters to get the damage that Godzilla would give, and that's absolutely insane. You just commit this guy down, and you got yeah, I got maximum plus four to all my checks, and then I can just on my first attack give it plus six to it. Yeah, I mean your typical uh, kill turn would be uh, an attack called Zaime's uh, wheel thrust which was a uh, difficulty-free, stun-free. Um, that gets you your first damage buff and, and such. 
then you go into things like your spinning demons, which multiply, um, and then you go quiet chaos attacks. Um, Demon Slayer was an attack that was incredible. Um, basically, it had a static, uh, static, which was well in card pool. Uh, when your opponent played an enhance on the stage now, you could discard it and negate the enhance. Um, and so you're clearing your card pool and stopping your opponent. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it was a really, really sort of um, a solid deck. It actually um, came finals of the 2010 World Championships, uh, coming second, I believe. So it was a very legitimate deck back then. Yeah, I mean, even just kind of going second, right, you can form, commit your character, you've got plus one on your build turn, right? Yeah, um, plus one on your build turn. Um, um, basically, you really rarely had to worry about your checks uh, while you were play, playing Jin. And Pick don't forget, Richard, back then you could also attack on your first turn. Sure. <laughs> So you could always you could have yeah. dropped a four diff attack or three diff attack, which were very powerful then, and get yourself some early momentum. And then, like, yeah, uh, you know, obviously once you hit that critical mass of getting the three extra characters, like just being able to say, okay, plus four to everything, and then my first three attacks, I'm just going to stack this plus two, so everything's coming in for potato to put into the string, which I guess is where like the the multiples and stuff come in of just being able to just have all that extra damage. Yeah. And, and bear in mind, like his kit also came with cards that got it momentum really easily multiples. A card called Mishima's Ibetsu Leader, which was enhance your opponent's guard momentum. If they do, you gain momentum. Um, literally that. Um, so, you know, he, like his whole kit was very rounded, and uh, you could play him as a really solid character just on what Kazuya's kit in the set got, and then a bit more chaos support that you could uh, put in. Yeah, I mean, I've always been a big fan of uh, six handers of 28 health that have chaos, death, and fire. Like I say, he's just always been my favorite character. And obviously, the fact that my only single standard top cut was with him, obviously, there's a bit of uh, sentimentality there as well. Yeah, once the yeah. new Jin got announced, you were kind of like immediately on the boat of. If this is standard, if this is standard legal for regionals, I'm playing it. And then it got confirmed. You're like, I need to know what this does as soon as possible, so I can start testing. Yeah, um, 100. percent Like, if they'd have announced him as a blank character, I'd still be playing him for regionals. Um, so you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be playing him um, uh, again. Like I say, it's probably my favorite character from any of the IPs of ever done for universes so definitely going to be excited i mean that's that's definitely some some committal so what is it that makes Jin your favorite because i mean like you said you've been playing this game for 14 15 years now what is it about Jin that has consistently made it your favorite to the point where you have literally just said if they printed a blank Jin, i'd still play it um, I just like the character in the games. is you know the well-rounded character in in the game itself. Should I say in the actual technical guys? Um, is a well-rounded character. Occasionally, is a bad guy, but not really a bad guy. Um, you know, is well written. He's obviously got his other side in Devil in Devil Jin. Um, they've just finished the story in Tekken Eight uh, and given a really good uh, send off, uh, sort of send off in the story. I mean, not in not in that he died, but a conclusion to his story. Should I say? Um, so, you know, it's just such a cool character. Um, you know, the only character I really got behind really was Mirio for my hero, uh, but Jin definitely sort of takes the hot spot for me. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I know you went a bit nuts collecting all for one XRs, and then you went a little bit crazy on the Mirio XRs. And now XRs are dead, so you can't go crazy on the Jin XRs. No, I can't. So instead, I just buy apparel um, so I can. Rep Jin properly. Yeah. So let's chat more about since we've got another 13 minutes. I expect us to have more. Tell us more about Jin. You keep mentioning that he, sometimes he's the bad guy, sometimes he's the, uh, the good guy. That sounds a little bit like an anti hero. What is Jin to the story? And how does he interact with like some of these other cards in here? Like we see, we have got Kazia and King, and I know June is a character. Uh, for those who are not aware of Tekken law, what's the relationship between Jin and June, and why would they select those as the Clash deck characters? 
So Dylan is Jin's mother. Uh, Kazuya is Jin's father. Um, so in terms of relationship, Kazuya is basically overall the bad guy. Um, Dylan was supposedly killed in Tekken 3, which prompted the teenage uh, Jin to take part in the tournament and fight, fight in the tournament uh, to find the guy who killed Jun. Uh, she did sort of come back in Tekken 8, um, uh, sort of like visions and stuff as a playable character as well. Uh, but basically, a large portion of the story of Tekken is based around the Mishima uh, and Kazama family. So, your Mishima is like uh, Kazuya Mishima, his dad, Aihachi, um, Aihachi's dad, Jinpachi. Uh, there's a large family tree, like a, a large portion of the characters are made up of Mishima characters. Um, now, the real selling point of the story is Mishimas have uh, Gene, the devil Gene, which is what you see in Jin and Kazuya. Uh, they both turn evil and devilish. And Jun has a separate ability, and she could turn into Angel. Um, and so, sort of, without getting into too much depth of it, Jin is obviously the combination of both through most of the story. Uh, sort of fighting in the tournament, getting drawn out uh, into fights because people are after his devil gene. Uh, in Tekken 6, he takes over sort of the main corporation that's heading the tournaments, and he sort of starts global warfare, and everyone's like, he's the bad guy. Uh, but essentially, the conclusion of that is he's started all this warfare so he can uh, stop a real villain from taking over and basically fight him and stop him. And turns out he's basically done the bad stuff to get uh, do the right thing. Um, and then ultimately, sort of um, going into Tekken 8, which is the last one, um, was mainly about the, the final confrontation between Jin and Kazuya, um, in which that they basically want to pretty much kill each other. Um, in the stories, oftentimes it concludes where it looks like they've killed each other. Um, it ends pretty um, uh, non-conclusively, should I say, but the, um, the overall ending feel of the gate of that story is still good. Um, you know, you have the um, the devils fighting and you have um, Jin sort of accepting his birthright and such. A really great character to, um, to watch develop considering all eight Tekken games take place over only uh, four years in total. That's some anime time scaling right there. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to fighting games, I, I generally, like, you know, I'm not the hugest fan, but obviously, I've, you know, I've played some, but, like, pretty much zero concept of any sort of story going on. Um, like, the only one that I had any sort of vague idea of what was happening would be, like, Soul Blade, Soul Calibur, which was mostly just them fighting over swords and like you know the soul edge like and that was it that was about the depth of my knowledge but yeah fighting games I, I, I law I know even less about than I do anime. And to be fair, most people we don't play fighting games normally for the story. To be honest, let's be honest. Yeah, <laughs> playing it to do cool moves and beat people up. So UFS, uh, aka Universes, got its start with fighting games. And it sort of built its fan base on fighting games. And when it came back as my hero after the pandemic, there's been a lot of people that have been waiting for fighting games to come back. Were you one of these people that were quite happy to see fighting games come back? And would you like to see more? Because I mean, we're getting a, a we're getting a Street Fighter Challenger. We've got the Tekken here. Would you like to see a main set come back? We got guilty, so guilty here, right? Um, Guild Gears, Gears well, yeah. and anime yeah. fighting games, which is kind of still in the same wheelhouse as MHA and stuff. I mean, for me, the um, the the play the, the playing of the game is sort of always the more important thing. Like, you know, how the game plays is fantastic. I love games where you play as a character and that character dictates your strategy. Um, from the original Dragon Ball Z from score for this. Um, now, obviously, happy to see Tekken if you're going to pick a fighting game. Tekken or Street Fighter would have been my top pick. Um, uh, but ultimately, for me, like when they announced all the newest IPs, uh, Turtles was sort of the one that I was like, oh, great, I'd love to, see, you know, I can't wait for that. But at the same time, they announced all these IPs I've never heard of, and I'm like, someone's going to be happy. This is fantastic. 
Yeah, I mean, everyone kind of knows the IP I was the most hyped for when it came to the, what was announced for next year. I mean, I currently have a Night Slayer dagger that there's only two of in the world. Uh, the other one is with the voice actor, so I can completely get behind the hype for certain IPs and going all in on the paraphernalia, such as your lovely jacket that you're wearing. Yeah. Got a spare, don't worry. You got a spare for it. Do you have a devil variant for it? Oh, I have... Um... Because I don't really normally play te- uh, Devil Gin, but I do have one that's his uh, Tekken 7 outfit as well. Uh, but it's a bit too big. So if you top at regionals, you're just going to have a whole fashion show ready to go for UVS. Yeah, yeah. I've, um, 4th of October, the new Tekken Nike comes out, oh, uh, no. which is one of them is Gin's. Um, so I'll be trying to get that. Um, so hopefully I can. That'd be awesome. Yeah. As someone who owns a pair of all-for-one shoes, that people do notice when you're wearing branded shoes. It's really, really cool. Yeah. So you're saying you love the gameplay of UVS and universities, and it's very rare we get to speak to someone who's been playing for so long about topics like this. How much has it actually changed? Because I know I got some of like the 2006 demo decks, and at its core for me, the game kind of still runs the same. It's just that the interactions seem to get a lot more complicated than they were 18 years ago. So how different is it from when you joined the game? So, I mean, first and foremost, the core of the game is the same, like, like you've just said. The whole point of the game, whether it's using that anime IP or fighting game IP, is it's essentially a fighting game put into card form. You're attacking, you're blocking, um, you know, utilizing resources to outmove your opponent. Um, so that core has never changed. Um, in terms of things like the complexity, I'd say it's not so much that it's more complex now. I'd say that uh, the complexity is more refined. Um, back then, you had some cards that were very like off the wall. Like the, um, the print cards that literally said, can you play a form, draw a card, for example. Um, and I'm sure we've all seen like the his- history videos like Tim Keith put out. Uh, where he talks about the various stages of UFS and such. Um, like a lot of the older sets, it did seem like they were just, they did it because they could and not whether they should. Uh, whereas now you've sort of refined that and it seems like they tend to, at all stages since Jasko took over up to UBS games, it's like they've got a vision for what they want, um, which, you know, it, it, so it, for me, it makes a more complete game. Yeah, I mean, that makes perfect sense. Yesterday in the Beginner's Assistance channel on Discord, someone was asking about forms and asking why they named forms, and I was explaining that it's a fighting game. It's about martial art forms, and our turn is essentially like a martial arts attack because it's built up of forms, and they were like, that's really cool lore. So, yeah, this game is a lot deeper than a lot of people seem to have actually noticed. It's through interactions through old heads like yourself that I even, that I even learned that. I think the biggest thing with um, UFS, UVS, is that it really tells when you've got experience in a game versus not experience. Uh, you could have someone with a lot of experience with a very basic deck really well against someone with no experience, but you've given them a top-tier deck because every decision you make at every point in the turn, in every turn, impact the overall end result. It's not a case of that one turn wins you the game. Like every single decision matters, and so that experience really shows when someone decides to commit one extra card and overcommit and ends up losing three turns later. Say. Yeah, and it's one of the things that I know a lot of card game players do do in multiple games is the games they lose stick with them more than the games they win, and they kind of self analyze turns in those games, trying to figure out the exact moment they lost because it's not, like you said, it's not the attack that killed them it's something that happened earlier in the turn early in the game that was the tipping point it's like i needed to do something there to change the flow of the game for me to win yeah and there's so often times where you can pinpoint something you potentially did which you know in a lot of games it's not always the case like some you know certain games your opponent just draws the nuts and you lose um, and that can happen in 
CBS, I'm not going to take from that, but like on the, your basic game where you know you've got the standard back and forth. Normally, if you went back, you can change the exact moment. No, that makes perfect sense, and it's part of why when I'm talking to new players and I'm talking to them about what they should build is because of ignore the meta, ignore what's competitive, go with what you love, because getting used to this gameplay, because like I said, this game plays differently than a lot of other card games, and although you get some transferable skills from Magic, from Yu-Gi-Oh, from Pokemon, from all these other games, actually mastering this game is a lot harder because every single form you do, if one of those forms is not properly executed, just like in martial arts, it affects the entire flow of your turn. Um, I always say when we're teaching you players, I'm, I say, look, you are going to lose a lot of games at the start, but that's because you're playing against players who have that experience. As you gain that experience, it'll slowly shift. Exactly. So yeah, one of, the, one of the best ways of getting better at games in general is playing against people better than you and losing and sort of evaluating why it is you lost, right? What are the decisions they made? You know, what are the decisions they made to to get that win? Like, what did they do differently than you? Like, what mistakes did you make? And then sometimes it's about sort of divorcing emotion from things and realizing that sometimes you make the correct decisions and still lose anyway, and it was still correct to make that decision, right? So, yeah. 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 So we have a minute before we can start looking at the previews. So what are your hopes for Jin and June? What do you want to see from these Clash decks? I mean, ultimately, I'd be happy with them to have um, some sort of basic level strategy within each one. Um, ideally, perfect to play against each other because people are going to pick these up and want to play Tekken just out of the box. Um, so, you know, um, I'm able to sort of, from the images that have appeared online, sort of get a graph of sort of what they're about, but not fully. Um, but ultimately, um, I've seen some of the artwork that's appeared on, uh, online uh, and such. And... Um, like I'm just hoping that the artwork's the same all the way through, um, and like say that you've got characters that you can take to a tournament and you can compete. Right, it is. It is eight o'clock. We it, that is three p.m. EST. I do believe we are allowed to show off these cards now. Uh, I really hope that we're not getting shot at. So let's start off with <coughs> June Kazuma. Light of Hope. I'm going to start off with the lovely intro that she has in Tekken 8. And then we can move into looking at the cards. I actually need to send you them over because I, didn't want to make, I wanted to make sure you didn't get them early, did I? Yeah. No, that's not a clever idea. So I guess just to, to kick it off, uh, yeah, just big thanks to UBS Games for, for sending us these previews um, that we get to share with you all. Um, and yeah, look at what's coming up in the new Tekken Clash decks. Um, obviously, they're, they're Clash decks, so they should be pitched a little lower in complexity than than challenges, right? They should be a bit more new player friendly. So, you know, I think going into this, the expectation should be that, you know, we'll, we'll probably see the odd card here and there that, that we can look through what a more competitive lens. But I think it's more looking at it from a, a new player does this deck work and do the thing? And is it, you know, reasonably obvious what it's trying to do in terms of in terms of the cards? So, yeah. so while um, Apple gets himself acquainted with the cards that I've just sent him, first car- the first one we have is June Kazuma, Light of Hope. Seven hander, 22 health, uh, character trait brawler, response, commit. After an attack deals damage, your rival adds a top card of a deck to the card pool face down. Enhance, spend one momentum, ready this character. It's a card pool clogger on damage for both offense and defense. I like it. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I completely agree. She like she's absolutely fantastic. Um Yeah. So yeah. Sorry, go on. Uh, no, I, I like it. Um, essentially, um, I feel like we'll be missing this on the format for 
this last rotation, basically. Some, you know, someone that close carpool. Uh, I think she sort of really does deliver on a balanced version of what we've had in the past in terms of things when, like, we've had uh, a tongue, basically a tongue whip based decks and such like that. I'm, I'm a huge fan of this cat. Yeah, so the, the thing that's an important thing that might be easily missed with what she does, right? Because it says an attack, not your attack. So this can be a defensive ability, right? Which she sort of needs as a 722. So, you know, they send in their, their poke or their first attack, and it's like, okay, I'll damage reduce this down to one, or I'll just face tank it, commit, stuff your card pull, please stop hitting me. And then next attack, okay, I'll spend another momentum. Guess what I'm going to do to this one? Um, and obviously then, you know, your, your opponent's sort of priced into blocking early in a string, right? Or else all of a sudden they can't block anymore because their carpool's getting clogged. And, you know, effectively you're getting that extra plus one speed to all your attacks. Exactly. It's great carpool clog. It's on symbols with Manata 2, which still has its own card pool card cards and things like Cheerful Uppercut and all Mina 2 stuff. Ooh. So, got some very powerful abilities. And as Apple said, you can't let this deal damage. You can't let it run away. The good and honor symbols are very powerful at the minute. She, she can do some serious damage with these abilities. And I think the way that she can also cheat momentum with water and stuff, like we saw with some of the water Godzillas, is not to be sniffed at. Yeah, I mean, if anything, that response feels better on defense, right? Yeah. And I'm just, just I'm just seeing um, uh, every smile combined with um, uh, twice as foundation uh, to just force the opponent to clog their own card or just try and play a, a turn. Yeah. Does she share symbols with? That card. Uh, Death Earth Void. No, I don't think it has learned the standards. Well, it's... Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, <laughs> so she can't learn the standards and then stuff, unfortunately. No. Um, combo, yeah, it's, yeah. It's also a combo breaker, which is very, very cool. Thanks for pointing that out, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Does share symbols with uh, Haymaker, though. Haymaker has order. And if you block with Haymaker, you then force your opponent to play an attack as their next form or discard a card. They like cut our half block with Haymaker. I'll take the damage. It doesn't have to be unblocked, attack, right? Nope. So you commit. It's you add one damage, so you can half block. Half block. I'll take some damage. Add one to your card pool, and I'll play another attack. I discard a card from your hand. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I think she's really cool, and I think she has a lot of potential. I just think, personally, in the current meta. A 22 health that stuffs the card pool by one kind of gets rinsed by things like Smiling Titan and these big, massive, big attacks that are trying to get a lot of damage through. That's the same for a lot of characters, yeah. right? But, like, just there, there, are, there are a lot of string characters at the moment. So, like, I, I think her, her defensive ability of being able to stuff your card pool is, is not to be overlooked, just whether you're damage reduction, whether you're half blocking, whether you're just face tanking, you know, whatever it happens to be. Um, like, I think that's that's really solid. Um, but the main thing she's lacking is just a, a way to find damage, which you hope she's got things that, that work with her carpal clog from that perspective, right? Um, like, she can sort of do pseudo speed with her carpal clog, but, you know, obviously she wants to find ways of sort of poking early, generate momentum, maybe force an opponent into a turn where they have to overcommit or feel like they have to overcommit because you've cl clogged the carpool, you know, you make them check on a, you know, a six for their second attack and then they check a three and all of a sudden you create yourself an opening. So that, that feels like... Richard, but how do you feel about City Rampage in this character? What's City Rampage really doing for her? Making it giving a plus one plus one to all of her attacks and making sure she can pass checks. There's a seven hander that still leaves open with a lot of a draw power and attack power. That means she could be, um, maybe. So, how do you feel about the character on a law perspective? Apple is is this what you'd expect June's fighting style to kind of be a very defensive? 
blocking, sort of making your opponent's attacks harder? Um, I mean, in in the game, she's basically just um, a very hard to block character. Fast. Um, I'd say she's sort of it's a fair representation to be fair. Um, she's very commonly used online because she's used to pick up and really like you know she gets she gets in quick. Um, so I think that's fairly good to be fair. Um, good representation. That's awesome then. So let's move on to the UR attack of the Clash deck, which is Amatsu Izanami. I hope I'm saying that right. Six diff, one low block, four mid for eight. Punch with an enhancer that says your rival adds the top card of the deck to their card pool face down. All right, yeah, cool. This is a five eight with yeah, essentially. <laughs> I love the fact that A, it's her ability on card, but I'll be honest, the first thing I'm thinking is put in a good Mirio deck and change <laughs> it to them. Uh, so, low 4 for 10 damage and you clog your opponent's card pool. See, I went to a different direction. I went, this would be very cool in... Uh, I've forgotten his name now. God damn it. Karama. It'd be very good in Karama because you just got, I play this on a 6, stuff your card pool, stuff your card pool, let's go. Yeah, and sort of, I guess, works with funny, punchy things, right, on order. Yeah. Um, so it's a really nice-looking card. I really like, oh. like the artwork of this. Um, like, the plus-one speed, effectively, for the rest of your turn is nice. I'm assuming she's got more synergy with cards in your opponent's card pool, at least I hope so. We'll have to, have to look at the rest of the kit. But it's a very four-speed mid for a six-diff. It hits hard, sure, but like your your opponent's priced into blocking anyway because of her response. So, like, just getting that effectively five speed on a on a six diff doesn't feel great. Um, yes, it hits hard, but they're they're always going to be trying to block this. So, like. I'd almost rather this be an 8-speed for 4 damage, right? If it's an 8-speed 4 damage, it's always getting through, and it's not the that's not kind of the point of the Clash deck. The Clash deck no, 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 like, sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, obviously I'm looking at this from like a competitive lens. I think it's it's cool it does her thing. Um, it just hits hard. You know, you're telling your opponent now in two ways you need to block this because it's coming in for 8 damage, and if you let, me, if you let it hit you, then I'm getting another card in your card pool, right? So... Um, yeah. So I've got a lot of utilization uh, outside of uh, Jun, to be fair. Yeah. You know, Godzilla uh, leading in with um, Citywide Rampage. Um, that's you're putting on that. Um, there's a lot of characters I think could really benefit from that pseudo plus one speed by clogging the card pool. If you want that 8-4, uh, you can always put in Hawks and have an 8-4 high. Mm. Yeah. It, I suppose the only my only beef with this it just doesn't feel very ultra rare. But again, that might be just through the lens of this being a clash deck, right? Um, we have had a very good point in chat, which is, do you know who plays this very well, Richard? He's not a character. Izuku Midoriya. Got that lovely water. This is a seven eight. It's not, yeah, for a seven diff. Uh, it, not that exciting. I'm sorry, a seven eight. A 7-8 that puts plus one progressive seems very good for a 7-diff attack. Not really. It's very <laughs> mid. Is there anything else? It is a very mid attack. That's kind of the point behind it. Uh, but yeah, the art, looks absolutely, the art looks gorgeous. I love the little signatures along the outfit, and I really want to see the foil patterning of these cards because I think... So the artwork I've noticed is uh, for this and Jim, uh, when you do your logo on the game, this is like the alternate logo you can have for your character, oh. for that particular character. That's really Three. cool. That's really, really cool. Yeah, and I guess obviously with these being Clash deck, there won't be any um, collectible oh, like things, yeah. So after that, we go to the lovely five diff common attack. So we have Grace which I assume is going towards her angelic grace. 
5 diff, 2 high block, 2 low for 5, with a simple enhance of stun 2. This is a very good clash deck card. This is what new players kind of should be learning with. Yeah, and I'm not sure what... I'm much more high on this one than I am the previous one. Sure, it doesn't hit as hard, but it's off zone. It's got stun two, so it's kind of pseudo two speed for the rest of the turn. It's only a five diff rather than a six. Um, and if it hits, you're getting plus one progressive, which means you've essentially taken out two of their foundations and given them an additional yeah. thing to uh, for their speed, uh, additional progressive difficulty. I think my only issue with this is that. Um, the five diff slot seems to be a lot more integral in decks now. Yeah. And mm. so I think as as like solid as this is for a clash deck, I feel um it really struggle to find place for it outside of a clash deck, to be honest, just because of how many really good five diffs are out Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't think this is necessarily a competitive card at all, unless you're desperate for punches on certain symbols like order punches or something or water punches. Like, unless you're desperate for punches on that symbol, I don't think it's, it's going to see any play, but... No, I mean, could see some Mina 2 play, because I, I think, is it a charger range or punching range for her? Punching range, I think. It's punching range. This could see some play in Mina 2, because, like I say, it's an off zone, it's got stun 2. Nah, she's got much better stuff to be doing. That's fair, that's fair. But yeah, this is just a very good learn-to-play card. It's Kind of what you want from a clash deck is a low mental load, high yield in learning how to play the game card. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's solid for a clash deck. Yeah, attack. Uh, love the art, love the leather pants outfit that's kind of going on here, and I assume Grace has something to do with her abilities. I mean, I'm not. Up on her entire uh, move roster, um, I'm gonna go with Shaw. Uh, I guess. <laughs> You'll be more law heavy when we get to the gin side of things. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at the four diff attack that we'll go and look by the lovely yes. So it is a four diff one mid block. Harakade Kaganagi. I do hope I pronounced that correctly. For Harakade Kaganagi, I would say, but Kanagi. like again, I'm probably butchering it as well. Four high for four with enhance. If you have at least one other punch card in your catapult, this attack gets plus one speed, plus one damage. So if you play this as your second attack, it's a five five. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, that's decent. That's another yeah. common attack. That's decent. Yeah. Again, I think we've seen a pattern here. These are clash decks. You know, these aren't competitively slanted. I don't think this will be see competitive play. I think it's great for a clash deck. It tells you what you want to do. You know, you read that card and it's like, okay, this is my second attack or my third attack or whatever, right? It's just obvious. And you get paid off for doing it. So you feel a little bit clever. Like as a, as a start player, right? It's like, oh, I can read this card. I can pass what it does. I can do the thing. So like it's it's really good from that perspective and like not a it's not a horrible card like a five five and five for a four it's fine got one mid block it's fine like it doesn't need to be crazy this could see play in Midoriya water as well again probably not it's just a like yeah. a card you know I think cards if they're just raw stats need to be better than that I mean um, they need to be better but outside of a clash deck this I think this is again a no, nice perfectly started thing of. Oh, yeah, this is an attack. You play it, and then you can enhance and get benefits for playing for having other cards in your card pool. So you don't just have to mm -hmm. attack and pass. If you play two attacks, this will get better. That's a great progressive learning tool for people who want to play a game because the Attack and Titan demo decks are cool, but not everyone's an Attack and Titan fan. They're going to pick up the Tekken 8 decks, and this is going to be a great teaching tool as well. Hmm. Again, this, this is a deck you can progress to from, from doing a demo, right? Exactly. Like, there's nothing crazy going on here. The only thing that's side is pointing so far is there's nothing really that capitalizing on her carpool clock so far. I will probably um, see that more in the foundations if it's meant to be a defensive tool. If that makes sense. <laughs> so, we've got an interesting one, which is Shunki. I'm hoping our Shunkai. Three diff, two mid block, three mid for three with powerful three. 
yeah, no, that's just... I like that. It's cool. I love the art. There's some nice capture of movement and action. Yeah, I'm, it's I'm nice. I'm a huge fan of seeing part of the free diff, to be perfectly honest. Is there? Like you can focus on the end of, end of a string as a free diff, and it's got powerful free to uh, push that damage through. I think I think that's really good, to be honest. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, when people talk about uh, cannon mouth, cannon tongue, whatever. It's kind of like that thing. You put it at the end of your string, you just go, yeah, I'm just going to pump all my momentum into this because you've got nothing left. Yeah. Or that, obviously, if you're playing the order symbol, you do the same. It's a four diff, but it also starts as a six low six, right? Powerful three. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, honestly, this might be the card out of those four attacks so far I've seen that is most likely to see corrective play just if you're in the market for playing a deck with three diffs. And, like I say, this being something to, you know, I've taxed all their resources. Oh, look. This is now a three mid for 12, but you don't have any cards in hand, so catch it, sucker. Are there any of the Attack on Titan three diff matters uh, your know, characters that are on order? I think Connie might be on order. I think they all have a certain amount of like three diffs amongst them, but I don't know if there are. But yeah, like it's again, I, odds are this doesn't see competitive play, but I think it. It is the one that that has that kind of dunk potential that maybe it does, but again, I don't, I don't think so. But again, it's it's totally fine for a clash deck, and as a as a newer player, you can sort of see the play pattern there, right? Of oh, okay, I can play this as my third or fourth attack when my opponent has like you know spent their resources because they're forced into blocking my stuff or they get their carpool clogged, and now all of a sudden they can spend all that momentum to to kill them in one big hit yeah. so so let's take a look at her ur foundation now so we're looking at the power to stop gin which is going to make apple a bit upset <laughs> unique enhance commit your attack gets plus one speed plus two damage destroy one moment destroy spend momentum if your character is june kazuma your attack gets plus two wow. speed and plus five damage that's kind of underpowered for a UR. No, I mean, commit for 1-2 isn't horrid. And effectively having Sugar Rush in your stage is pretty good, like, just as, as her. If the, if the second enhance for this, uh, Destroy Spell Momentum was tenacious, then maybe, because then you can get the 3-7 and you've lost your foundation, so I think, like, as in one big spend. Mm. This just looks like a retrain of charging one for all. Um with on less speed gain and momentum on the cost. Mm. Yeah, this is when I when I commit, I mean you're getting plus one, plus two. As a you there are rares that do more damage or like the same kind of thing. So as a you are, I you expect something to be a bit more powerful, but remember he gets that clash deck. This is quite powerful for new players to come across. Yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm, I'm a big fan of that game. Like those stats, like it's a great finisher. Um, you know, I obviously I know I said it's a retrain of uh, charging one for all, but ultimately when you put plus two plus five on attack at the end of the string, you can finish an opponent off. Just find it a bit unusual that this is like the second deck product where the foil foundation has had pretty much the same kind of ability. Okay, and now yeah. we're going to... Yeah, I mean, I guess Charging 1 for was gated, right? And, like, this is sort of character gated, but, but like, plus 2, plus 5 is not to be sneezed at, right? You know, everyone's happy to jam Sugar Rush whenever they can, and that's that has a lot more gating and takes... and, and can't be committed to pass checks, right? So, and this, you know, and commit for plus 1, plus 2 isn't nothing, and you can just do that until you're ready to go, oh, actually, the, I want this one to connect, or... This one is connecting. I'm just going to put five damage on or what have you. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's solid. But I probably just done play about side of her. Uh, yeah, because he's got the limitation. But we've got Purge the Evil. Two mm -hmm. diff, two high block, six check. Enhance commit. If your rival has two more cards in their card pool, your attack gets plus three damage. So there's your synergy with card of the card pool. Yeah. 
pretty good, I think. Like, the numbers around the edges, and, like, partially, like, a card that I, I might have, like, um, discarded, but, like, you know, Tim was talking about this in our little creator chat and how he was very impressed with this card, and, like, sort of called me to have a little look at it, right? Because it seems fairly unassuming on face. But, like, if you look at the numbers on the edges, like, 2-6 is pretty solid. Like, it's got the 6. That's really yeah. nice. The six two is high block is pretty decent. Like, a 2 high on a foundation is nice. And commit for plus 3 damage is, is a pretty good rate. Like, you're fairly happy with commit for plus 3. Um, and so you've just got to jump through a little hoop to to turn it on. But also, like, in a way, you almost don't. Because you could just have this in stage and, like, you know, your opponent's sort of holding a couple of cards in their hand and you just start throwing attacks. And they're like, you can block these if you want, but then I've got this sitting in my stage that you're well aware of that says, if you block the first couple, all of a sudden, you now can't block this third one in my string that is now coming in with plus three. It's also um, a great anti-Mirio, Rhino, Invincible body card because they, you can sort of sit there with these six, seven damage attacks, and they go, cool, I could zero it out, but he's just going to give it plus three damage back, and that's not great. But yeah, like, commit for plus three is, is a good rate in a card, and, and the numbers hold up as a two, six, or yeah, two high. Yeah, going to run a six check like this. How, how are you feeling about it, Apple? I'm a huge fan of this card. Um, like, like Rich said, the numbers are perfectly fine. Um, the fact that it's got two, six on it, and then a high block, I think that's great. What I'm seeing from the whole deck is, even though they are clearly tailored, tailored for new players, the experience they'll get is every card seems to allow them to understand how to get its payoff. But they can have yeah. that experience of really enjoying the game um, and getting payoffs off of all the cards. So I think so far I'm really impressed with what they've put out for the product. That's a very good point. As a step up from the demo, where the demo is like, these are your basics of basics, being a step up to more... This is how cards interact with each other and how you can be, how as you get better with the game, you can understand more about the benefits of playing these cards and how they're going to work together is a great step up before you get to the challenges of, and this is now what you need to have to stop your opponent from killing you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I totally agree there. Um, obviously, I have opinions about the attack on Titan Clash deck. We're going to go into those, but like this feels like a like so far these cards feel really good as Clash deck cards, right? They they all have like a little puzzle to solve, right? They all have a little thing to get your head around that isn't crazy, but that feels like you're interacting and understanding the game when you solve that puzzle. So, for example, just like the the Haridi Kanage, it's like okay. I need to, I, you know, I, if, if this is my only attack, maybe I need to not attack this turn or this, you know, it needs to be my second attack. So, okay, I played as my second or third attack. I've solved that puzzle, right? Shunkai, like the powerful three. Okay, it's a 3D. If I can play at the end of my string, I'm going to save my momentum and hopefully my opponent, because they thought they sort of incentivized to block me anyway because of my character, I can then dunk them with this little 3D from the end. Like that's a problem I'm solving. That purge the fate the pathway purge the evil okay again it's it's like you're seeing the, the sort of how that card interacts with the game and it's not crazy complicated but there's enough there to sort of get your teeth into as like okay how do i solve this problem how do i make my opponent turn this on and from the like from the other side of like okay this i don't need to turn this on right maybe i my opponent doesn't block me because there's there's all those puzzles going around with these cards that I think make a lot of sense. Like the power to stop the gene, it's like, okay, when do I just commit this for one, two? Or when do I want to spend that momentum, sacrifice it to make this big attack that hopefully then connects? Like, Yeah, exactly. So None of them are crazy complicated, but they give you puzzles to solve in the game that I think are going to be engaging. Yeah, they give the new players a lot more experience and a lot of great ways to learn and understand the interactions of the game. Hmm. Uh, so let's move on to the next common, Diff 5 Fate. So a 2, Diff, 2, Mid Block 5, 
With destroy one foundation, your attack gets plus one speed, plus one damage. This this is decent. Yeah. I mean, obviously, keyword locked, but she is just all punches. So that's fine. This is a nice deadlock out. I think that's his purpose in the deck, to teach new players about deadlock and deadlock outs and how to play um, how to play around with your foundations and going well i don't know if we're deadlock in this set right i don't know if we've seen there i don't know if we are in seeing but it's it's a way of your you know way of learning how to use your resources and sometimes destroying your resources is a a thing you want to be doing like you've commit something to pass a check you then destroy it for the plus one plus one again small problem you can solve, small bit of strategy there of, oh, I've committed this past check, this is the resource I care about the rest of the turn, I can just get it back to, you know, I can just get plus one, plus one, and we're all good, right? Um, and again, two, five, two mid, nice stats. So, yeah, this is a solid card if you're playing punches. And again, I, I could see this C in play in, in standard if punches are a thing. If you're a punch deck, then this is probably going to be a, a sort of deadlock out style card that, that you would consider. I mean, we're getting a lot of order punches here, and repeated smash was a hundred dollars for a part of a reason at one point, so it mm. could come back again. Well, I'm a huge fan of this card. Like, um, you know, it's great to see. Um, I like when you see uh, both stats getting added, so speed and uh, damage. Yeah. And yeah. what I will say, when was this product designed? Because we have sacrifice now. Oh, good point. That is a very good point for the wording. Yeah, obviously that's part of the the weirdness when it comes to designing card games and how sometimes you're designing things in weird orders and not necessarily in terms of their release schedule. So yeah, I'd imagine that should... Let's talk about a very nuts card in the deck. Ecological Fighter. One diff, two high block, four check, Flip, ready one, face down foundation. If you've dealt damage this turn, ready two foundations instead. That's disgusting. I love it. New favourite card in this that we've revealed so far. <laughs> yeah. A Chaco 4 is going to love it. Yeah. On mortar. A Chaco 4. Fala, it's uh, symbols with weightless. Is it weightless? Yeah. 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 Share symbol weightless. It shares symbols with fallen kill strike, so you can just unflip it and get. Have yeah, you probably don't have too many spots for just weightless these things, but like this is almost better than weightless, right? Yeah. Um, like I think weightless kind of thing. You can, but weightless is always one of the ones that I end up cutting for my decks anyway, just because sometimes I don't want that. But like, yeah, weightless being a, a one five three high, you just flip ready one. Like this obviously is has the four check. But the ability to sometimes be able to ready two is like you know flip to ready two foundations is is crazy powerful. Um, I mean, even though it's the fact it shares symbols with enormous axe and weapons clash as well, so you could flip a weapons clash, yeah, mm-hmm. build one committed, flip this, ready it, and then you've got more stuff ready to go on your second turn. Yeah, yeah, I think this is very very powerful, very very cool, common and. I, I wasn't really I wasn't really interested in buying them. I saw this card. I was like, yeah, I, I guess I kind of need to buy these decks because at some point I'm probably going to have to play this card. I do feel that with the um, arrival of with the arrival of Ruin, um, I do feel like cards that rely on face downs like this, you do need that bit more than what they would have had before, just because it can so easily be destroyed now. So yeah. the cost of playing the cards is, or the risk of playing the cards is greater. It's a video I keep meaning to make, but I keep forgetting to make that about how the flip cost is now a lot more dangerous than it used to be because people just used to go, oh, flip's a free cost. It's like, not anymore? Ah, Ruin isn't real. It's fine. It can't hurt you. Ruin is 100% real, and Rhino is still a thing. Don't let that Irata get you. He's still a thing out there. And then let's look at the last card before we get to... We're going to go a bit faster because I didn't realize how long we're actually taking. Not to say that these cards don't deserve it, but we've got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, June's Flowing Strikes. So this is a one diff, four, but two low check, two low block, five check with Enhance Your Turn Destroy. 
If your rival has eight or more foundations, they add the top card of their deck to the card pool face down. Like it's a one five two low with a ability that isn't I mean I mean like clogging their carpool by one, sure. Um just getting a effective plus one speed and everything is okay. Um but it being gated to eight or more, like you know, pseudo mini deadlock kind of thing doesn't feel great. Um again, it's totally fine, but as a as a destroy cost. Like you have to be sort of going in that turn, right? Yeah. Um, it's fine. Uh, your thoughts, Apple? Um, same as Richard to be fair. I think the thing I find most interesting about this is we're seeing more and more cards that specify a number of foundations. I'm hoping it's a precursor to them having deadlock be number gated, so you have deadlock eight, deadlock nine, um, rather than just deadlock be ten alone. I'm hoping they're experimenting with this to see how this works in terms of controlling outbuilding your opponents. That's right. I really like it, but I wish it was tenacious because that's what you point out. This is the kind of card you play when you're going in. So I'd love to play it two, three attacks in. I committed it and go, cool. I think I can kill you this turn, so I'm just going to pop this while it's committed and make you stuff one more and try and get that kill. Yeah, I mean, ideally you want to do this in your first attack, right? Because. Like that's you're know, getting the most from them that plus one speed or pseudo speed. Yeah. So this is the first few cards of June's kit. We've got a lot more to see. Uh how we how are we feeling about June? I think as a character, I, I like her as a character. Like I would quite happily play her in a regular tournament uh, outside of the deck box. Um I think her kit, like we've already discussed, is so good for someone learning to play the game and take that next step up and start sort of advancing. Like, I feel like UBS games are creating products that create like a stepping stone to get them to that competitive point now. I think that's a, a really good sort of product. Like from the Attack on Titan Clash decks to this, to them um, building their own deck for a tournament, for example. Yeah, she's fine. Um... There's, there's, uh, obviously, there's more cards from her kit to be revealed. Obviously, there's not too much that really works with her carpool clog. Hopefully, we'll see some of that in the rest of her kit. But, yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see. Obviously, there's only just that one, really. Apart, apart from it being pseudo speed and the defensive side of it, there's not much. You know, there isn't like a tongue whip, for instance, or anything along those lines. Um, so, yeah, we'll see if there's anything that, that works with that, that carpool clog in the rest of her kit. But, yeah, we can... Uh, Move on to Jim. Yes, let's move on to Jim. And let's see if Apple is happy with Jim. Let's start with his intro. intro. I don't know if this place is William, but I can, uh, maybe it is on stream. I guess I'll put it muted, but... Uh, yeah, there's no music for it because I don't want to get copyright strokes. So, Jin... That is fair. <laughs> the Lightning of Fate, which is a very, very cool sounding name, is a six-hander with 31 health, brawler, air evil good, Commit your attack against plus one speed and plus one damage for each attack in your carpool. Enhance if your rival has eight or more foundations, your attack gets plus one speed, plus one damage. It's, I mean, it's, it's kind of pseudo deadlock you were talking about before, Apple. The committal makes me kind of sad unless we can find ways to keep ready and get back, back the cup. I, mean, I I think sort of I look at it um, and it's, it's great again it's great for a flash deck I think my biggest issue is 8 foundations plus 1 plus 1 uh, when we've just had a set where characters get to 9 foundations transform into a giant and then get really big stat increases that's right um, you know it, it, my immediate thought is I'm going to play him on evil with uh, the 80% power um, 
essentially putting your opponent on a six foundation limit rather than you know before you were uh, a seven foundation limit sorry yeah before you were uh, burn one and make them build two um i would have liked to have seen maybe even if it was one more damage on that second enhance or and that card looks awesome yeah i was going to ask how you feel about the arts and the fact that your hoodie is currently in the art yeah it, i think it looks fantastic now I like the name, the name they've given it. Um, genuinely, um, I do feel that he's maybe been a little bit overbalanced. Um, I think if it have had slightly higher stats on that second enhance, he'd been a really great gatekeeper for all the transforming characters currently, like in the mayor, your Rhinos, your Bertolt, and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that that increase doesn't quite uh, get him there. But I mean, I'll still be playing it. Yeah, you're going to be playing, but I mean, it, I just feel early game. He's kind of a blank character. Yeah, that's sort of my beef with him, right? Is your opponent gets to control whether he does anything, which is not a good state to be in. Um, like, you know, if your opponent, like, it's the sort of uh, fourth kindly type thing where your opponent can just sort of dance around it. Like, they can just stay at seven and then they can decide maybe they're going to go to eight when it doesn't matter anymore. Um, yeah. I- Apple's if they go to show, seven, Apple's going to show up to regionals with this, and his first round is going to be up against uh, Karasu, who's never going to go above six. Karasu's never going to go above three. Um, <laughs> yeah, and just, like, and just other, otherwise, a commit for plus one, plus one. And sure, like, you know, I'm sure there's probably some things on air where it's like, okay, I play my fourth attack, it's a falling skies. I'm going to give this throw and plus four, plus four, and plus four, plus four for myself, and it's a Virginian damage. And then they obviously barrier shield or something, right? But yeah. like, um, yeah, yeah, I'm not blown away. Like, he doesn't certainly on on face. He doesn't seem that interesting, unfortunately. Um, like, do you like the design around um, just being a balance to the Jun deck rather than being sort of his own character? Yeah. I, I, Maybe, yeah, you, and that's fine, right? They can be balanced against each other to be played against each other as like this beginner product, and I'm totally okay with that. Um, I just think, yeah, I just. Someone in chat has mentioned that it's a good evil character, which I think only Hawks has had outside of that. Mm. But that does bring up the point that this plays Hawks Feather very well, because you get the additional speed from dropping it as a hand, then you commit and you can get plus two, plus two, plus three, plus three. Yeah. <laughs> Me personally, I think it's great for the Clash deck, but I think this, what I've been saying all along is Clash deck should come with a second version of the character that has similar abilities but slightly more complicated that are more tournament sort of uh, appropriate. So it should come with a second one that you go, right, now I know how to play the deck. Now I've got a character I can bring to a tournament uh, because I feel that one extra minor ability in it'd be much better, but I just think that is overbalanced a little bit. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I can go with that. But I see what you mean about... I, for me, I know what you're saying about it being too offset June, but the commit ability doesn't seem to even offset June because it has to be a taxi card pull. She puts face downs. So he doesn't really get to even utilize her ability and go, ah, oh, I'm using your ability against you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's take a look at some of the other lovely cards we've got going on here. Where, yeah, where's that one hiding? Here it is. But this gorgeous card that we've seen in the Playmat Arts, I believe, yeah. is Polar Demon Gorge. Gouge. Gouge. Six diff, zero low block. Love to see a zero low block. Three. Free control, four mid for seven, EX three, enhance your rival's check to block this attack gets minus three. So essentially, it's a seven seven. What? Do you, first of all, let's start off with the art. How are you feeling about this art, Apple? I love the art. Like, I would play this card even if it was blank, just because of that art. <laughs> if it was blank, I you could have a full art version, which would be even better. But I actually really love what's written on it as well. Uh, essentially, it says this attack's going to hit you, or you're going to have to use a lot of resources to stop it. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah, I like it. Like, sure, it's a six diff, but it does have a zero low block, which is really good. And it's you know, it's 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 weird the the check to block thing, but it just means that sort of uninteractable speed to an extent. Um, so it's like a it's you know, it's a seven mid seven with ex three. That's pretty chunky stats for a six diff. So I'm sort of much more on board with this one than and the zero other. Zero low block. Yeah. Again, probably doesn't do enough for a, a constructed thing, but I, I, I'm much more on board with this as their, their big flashy ultra rare than I was the other one. I, um, I, think, I, I think Mirio could have some fun with a 7 9 off zone attack that says, uh, yeah, waste resources. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Go a bit faster for these because I haven't eaten yet, and neither of the little boy in these stands get a bit hungry. <laughs> it's a bit awkward because we've got other things that I wanted to record, but we'll see. Uh, then we have High Right Roundhouse, got some cool roundhouse cards in it. Five diff, one mid block, six high for free with stun one, free control. Is this more what you're looking for, Richard, in the last one? No, I mean, it's fine, but it's three damage on a five diff. So, you know, no one's ever playing this. Um, but last time you said you'd been happy if it was an eight for four on a six. So no, I, was... no, I said I almost would have been. <laughs> like, just because it works better with the character, she wants things to connect to get that progressive speed from the carpool clock, right? That's not what, what Jin's doing. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is a 7-4 in him with stun 1. Is it? If, if there are 8 foundations, which, as Apple was yeah. saying, you can build them so they kind of force to have to build out. Again, look, but we're looking at this from the context of, like, yeah, you can play 8% power for playing the single structure and stuff like that, right? But from, from the context just of the Clash deck, it's just a bit underwhelming in terms of 3 damage on the 5 diff. Like, yeah, it's got a nice high speed, so it's sort of like a really nice guaranteed momentum poke. Um, but other than that, I'm not sold. Um, yeah, sorry, not like Dan was saying Godzilla might play this, but yeah, I don't think he has any of those three symbols. I mean, it? yeah, Godzilla doesn't have the uh, evil arm. Mm. Um, Mirio might play it. How do you feel about this in Mirio, Apple? Uh, I mean, Mirio can play it, but I mean, it's not got slam or punch, so he can't. Yeah, it's just a kick. kick. Yeah, it's just a kick. Uh, I, um, I mean, I like the card. Um, I like the, uh, you know, it comes in with good speed, but unless you've got some really hefty damage pump, uh, if, if you've a character that's got really free damage pump, good card, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to connect. Um, I'd say Jin doesn't probably give it enough damage pump to warrant it. That's fair. Godzilla minus one does, that's fair. <laughs> uh, minus one isn't a character, we know Izuku that. Izuku Midoriya on the move. Can give us some stats. You can give it even more speed. <laughs> even more speed. Ooh. Get wrecked. Uh, yeah, I think this would be pretty cool. It's, I think it's decently styled if you want to get momentum to help out with other attacks later on down the line. Yeah, like it's it's a reasonable just, I'm going to poke for momentum, but it's the easiest thing in the world to damage reduction and the easiest thing in the world to just ignore and take three damage. So, That's yeah, not really. That's a fair conclusion. Then we have a bit funky with me. Brazilian kick. So lots of kicks from the boy. Uh, Brazilian kick, four diff, two high block, four mid for four with a free control. Enhanced if your character's committed, draw a card. Powerful two. Uh, now I'll see it. Um, anything that's got a draw on it, I think it's good. Yeah. If your character is committing for their abilities. Uh, I, I quite like as a card. I think it's probably what I'm seeing is one of the best attacks in his kit. Yeah, it's a bit mid, but again, it gives the new player the problem to solve here, right? It's like, a, oh, okay, this is the one I want to commit, give stats, and then I do this thing and I draw the card and I solve that problem, right? Again, good kind of progression through stuff. Um, 
And also, I think you could then obviously then dump momentum on to get extra powerful after you get a whole bunch of speed and stuff from his ability. So yeah, it's solid. Like it's not exciting. Um, fine. Yeah, I mean, worst thing is you commit your character as a first attack because you want to draw another card, and it's a five mid for five that that's let you draw a card. It it's mm. okay. It's more getting used to using your character's ability in a clash deck, which is something that's very good for players to learn how to utilize. Then I'm, I'm I'm liking that we're seeing more three diff attacks in the actual clash decks because before it was just a lot of four fives and then you had your sixes on top. Uh, we got Geyser. Three diff, two mid, uh, block, one high for four, punch with a free control. This attack gets plus one speed for each attack in your card pool. It's, it's not great. I'm going to say for that one. Fine. But again, like, you know, you play this as your fourth attack in your string. A five it's, a five, three, yeah. it's a five high for four that, like, you know, it's, it's fine. Like, you play this as a fourth attack, it's a five I high mean, for four, three diff, but that's, that's as... not it. If you're playing it on uh, on your fourth attack and you haven't committed your character yet, it's a nine eight. Yeah. So again, it's like totally fine as a string ender here. Yeah. Even on face, like without any other attacks, it's just a two high four and a three diff that like you can just poke with and hope for the best, right? After so, seeing June's not, not horrific. Yeah, after seeing June's one be powerful, I feel less wild by this one. Yeah, it's nice. Whole... I'm believe it or not, I'm I'm actually a big fan of this. Um, but I'm only thinking of it from the perspective of skin specifically. Yeah. Like you say, if you put it on your fourth card in your in your card pool, this card's going to have pretty fast stats, um, with no real additional resources required. So we're putting out eight, nine, potentially ten damage depending on where you're throwing it, um, and it's going to be fast. Um, I I actually really like it in the context of the deck. Um, but I completely agree. We're going to rate the three discs, John, hands down. Yeah. Right, let's smash through these beautiful foundations. So we have, as you were talking about in their law, we have the Devil Gene. Three diff, two mid block, five control, unique. Spend all momentum. If your rival has eight or more foundations, your attack gets plus three speed. Destroy if your character is Jin Kazuma. Ready your character. This solid. Is, yeah, this is what I'm. I'd be happy to destroy if I was like if I had multiples of the threes. Well, it doesn't matter, right? It just as long as you're getting an extra activation out on a turn, you think you're going to kill them, then it's worthwhile. And before that, it's putting EX three on every single attack, which is solid. Um, again. Basically unplayable outside of, of Jin Kazama. Probably pretty pretty good in him. Right? Yeah, like, I, just I in... like it. Um, I play it in a deck where you don't have a much uh, use for uh, momentum spending. Um, yeah, you've got less maneuvering for that now, right? So Yeah. Um, on the defense, but this is on the offense. So I'd well, probably use maneuvering also but... works on offense and you get to change the zone. Yeah. And isn't gated by data well, more You can't and... commit it to pass checks early, which is a bit weird. Yeah. But that's his only real drawback in the comparison here. But yeah, as Dan says, outside of uh, him, he's just bad maneuvering. Yeah, it's solid. It's a card you're playing him, right? But that's exactly. it. So after that, we get Jin's Heart. So that is a two diff, two low block with a six check. So again, so we've seen the two cost six checks coming in. Commit if your if this if your attack deals damage, your next attack gets plus three. I prefer to see it as a response than when your attack deals damage. But apart from that, it's okay. Yeah. Um. Like, obviously, this works very well with that 6-3, right? That's sort of the joke here, I guess. Um, 
like outside of playing stuff with his kit. Like it's it's obviously a two six two low numbers numbers good, yeah. but like you can imagine playing this on a throw, right? I will commit, and then I will say if my throw deals damage when it's plus plus three. So again, there's a little hoop to jump through to get your plus three damage, but commit for plus three damage is pretty solid. Um, and also, like you can say, like I will commit this fast attack is if it deals damage, your next attack gets plus three. Are you going to sort of spend your resources to deal with this one, or are you going to wait and then deal with the next one? And spoilers, I wasn't actually attacking. I was, and you took that one, right? So there's, there's again. There's little bits of play here for a reasonably simple card. You get that dabby free fallacy of I'm going to put plus three on my next one, regardless hmm. of if the next one's coming, just to put you on edge of do I really want to block this one if the next one's going to be bigger? Yeah. In general, though, I'm not a fan of commit my next attack does a thing. Um, Tank, just because. Uh, Tank Cliff doesn't have good, does it? It's a. Void, Earth, and Chaos. Yeah. So you can't, yeah. Because I mean, building this off Time Cliff would be huge. It'd be great. <laughs> yeah. It's fine, but I'm not I'm not as sold on this one as the, the other one from Dune's kit, just because that's a commit, do a thing now, whereas this is a commit, do a thing later. I'm never a huge fan of those. Um, How are you feeling about Apple? So I'm I'm sort of slightly the opposite of what Rich just said in terms of I don't mind commit to a thing later. I do mind commit you might get a chance of doing something later. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so you've utilized the resource and you've got to deal with damage. So your opponent, it's in the hands of your opponent, they can cancel that ability just by stopping it. I just uh, I always feel that sort of, you know, you're very bitter when the um when it gets stopped. Or, you know. It's uh, it's like I say, it's a bit of the puzzle to play in the deck. Yeah, I mean, it's great for new players who are playing these against each other because you get to go to your June who you're playing against going, you need to block this or my next attack comes up. So it's a great learning experience and getting that interaction. But for me, it's just been a better response. When your attack deals damage, commit your net, commit this, or commit after an attack deals damage, your next one gets plus three. It would have been smoother. Because you're not letting your opponent block it. You got they already have that thing of I need to block this because that's down, but it isn't just going. Oh, if you block this, my ability just go and does nothing. Yeah, I can see why they're doing it like this because like they'll probably avoid too many responses. In fact, have we actually had any responses in these yet? Uh, just on fire, I think. Yeah, just, just on just on June. They're probably avoiding having too many responses so it can be more simplified in the game state yeah. when they're playing yeah, it. Yeah, that's fair. That's, that's a great catch. I didn't even notice that. But yeah, the amount of responses has been quite dwindled. I think it might literally be only on June. And sort of happens. He sort of has to get so far, There is another like, yeah. 20 cards left to be shown. Uh, then we have the Kazuma fighting. Uh, Kazuma style combos, which has got a very cool looking... Art, I think that even looks very, very much like a demonic wing coming out of his back, which is very cool. Yeah, isn't it? I'll, spam. Hmm? I'll spam this attack every game I play. <laughs> and then we've got Enhance. Flip, your attack gets plus one speed, plus one damage on a one cost, three low block, five control. That's decent. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's fine. fine. It's fairly modest for a, a flip cost, right? It's just, you know, plus one, plus one isn't hugely exciting, just on a flip cost. Um, it's okay. Not something, again, totally fine for a Clash deck card. Not something I'm running at rushing around trying to play. This is the kind of card of host teaching people to play with because don't forget, you have got plus one, plus one there if you think that's going to help you get the attack through, get the kill. And like, oh, yeah, that's a very good point. Mm. And... This card could be the difference between killing your opponent and letting them live with the Jin commit. And then the last one that we have here is a very cool static ability that we have on Jin's parry. It's a zero cost foundation with a free mid block, five control, and it just has a static ability of. When you block with this card, it ignores progressive difficulty. 
It just makes you an overhaul for a block. Yeah, a really nice kind of reasonably modest spam. Like, you know, obviously this probably had to have a reasonably bad block mod on it, but it can block anything, right? It's a mid block. So even if you can half block later on, this, you, you know, you block without that progressive. Um, really yeah, anti, it's, also, it's a very really anti June card. Because... Yeah, it's a little, little anti June. Um, but like, yeah, but it's it's a it's a it's a zero five right. So with a a reasonable ability to have when you draw it late and don't necessarily want to just build it, mm-hmm. like it's a reasonable block to have. So like you know, on these symbols, I could see people playing this in their spam slots. I mean, on air, you're probably still running basic training as your zero mid, you know, as the yeah, yeah, sure, but like, uh, but I mean, on good and, and on air after rotation, I don't really see what you're going to be running. Well, after rotation, basic training goes. So yeah, so I mean, it's on air and on good. What's hmm. your zero going to be? Because on evil, you've still got Master's Pride, which is a very powerful zero cost foundation. But yeah, as long as you're you're doing that, but done, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's better than a blank. Yeah. It's solid. It's solid as a zero five, and that's sort of the the sort of reasonably modestish abilities that zero that zero diff should have, right? So yeah, it's a very good zero diff, and it does allow the people on the clash decks to learn what static abilities are. How are you feeling about it, Apple? I like it. Um, again, it's one of the things where it's good enough that when you're looking at your your uh, zero diffs. I'd contemplate it for a slot of what I've got. Obviously, basic training uh, and things like that, you'll always have some priority. Yeah. Rotation happens. So it'd definitely be a contender for a slot, depending on whether I was trying to play more defensive or aggressive. Yeah, no, that's very, very fair. So, as our resident June, uh, gen expert, how are you, you feeling about. Is there one more? Yeah, what was intentions? Did I miss intentions? I did miss intentions. I do apologize. I mean, very, very foolish, and I was trying to go for them in order. Warped Intentions, a 1 diff, 2 low block, and a 5 control with enhanced flip. If this attack has received a speed and damage bonus, it gains stun 1. Pretty bad, I think. Again, I, I'm okay with it in the context of Clash deck in, in it. It is, is it stunning in all caps, like this is true. <laughs> Is it being like a puzzle solve? Oh, I've given it gin stats. It's got to be nice. It's cool. I can flip and see if it's done one. But like, just as a flip stun one, I'm like, I'm not that interested in that. But again, totally fine for the, the, the clash deck as a one, five, two low. Yeah, it's just very, very cool. I'm very, very happy with it. It's, I think it would have been better as just a cheeky little once per turn kind of thing. Hmm. But apart from that, I'm kind of okay with it. Why am I still... Uh, so, now that we've seen them all, how are you feeling about the Jin Clash deck, and is it... How law accurate is it? I mean, you know, obviously they've used all of his sort of base level attacks, and obviously I've seen a lot of the stuff that you know, I, I personally do on the game as well. Um... I'd say, yeah, he's basically um, a character that has, he plays a, a form of cry, so he's basically fighting style, combined with his uh, Mishima style, which you, know, you get represented in his like, his ultra rare and uh, some of his foundations. Um, I overall like it. Um, you know, I would have preferred maybe a few higher numbers from the character specifically, uh, but like, I, I'm not going to be dissuaded from playing him. Um, you know, I'd Definitely wouldn't be ranking him in the higher tier, higher tier categories, but I think overall we've got a really great product for getting people into the game. Yeah, I mean, that's a great takeaway to have. It's very cool for new players. It's a great way for players to learn. It's a great way to reintroduce fighting games into the game. How are you feeling about your choice to play this at regionals no matter what? Now you've actually seen a bit more of the card. Oh, I'm, I'll be happy with a 50-50 result, but I'm still <laughs> doing it. And will you be buying four of them so you can play Gin Retro and have eight characters down? I, I hadn't actually crossed my mind. Oh, you before. can't because it's not got a check value. Oh, oh. But playing 
five, maybe, and put you can play, you can play the him and gauge out the old one to gain the abilities, and then have five. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm, I don't think they're buying multiple decks. Whether I buy four, I don't know. Uh, see, that's the problem with printing new characters that can't be added to the deck. You mess with retro UVS. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really know it's why they've done this and got rid of... Like, it's nice from an artistic perspective. Hmm. It really shits on Toga 4, 5, yeah. whatever it is. Toga 4? Toga 4, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't really get it, but, like, sure. I think it's um, cool. I didn't, I didn't even notice on Sun Jin Wu and, like, on this character until I went to go put them in the deck. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, you can't run this... Uh, with gauge to make the other gin a bit more broken. It, maybe it's something they'll backtrack as retro gets a bit more popular and just say, oh, all characters are six sixes unless they specifically state on them like gin and ectoplasm. However. But, uh, yeah, no, I, uh, I don't, I think a flip card current might have been a bit too complicated for clash decks. If this was a challenger, we might have seen Jin transform into Devil Jin. Yeah, yeah. I think these are pitched totally fine in the sort of Clash deck power level and complexity. Um, like to me, they're much better Clash decks than the Titan ones. Um, like you know, there's there's some complexity here, but not too much. There's there's little puzzles to be solved and sort of feel clever when you do, right, as a new player of, oh, I, I, I got what this thing does and how that works. Brilliant. And that, you know, gets those those cogs whirring, I think, with these cards. So, yeah. To channel the dobbers for a second, these this product isn't for us. It's for Apple because he's a massive fan of Jim. But this is a great new player product. This is what Clash mm -hmm. Nets should be. Players can come in, they can pick up these decks, and they can learn and they can have fun. And I do think Apple is right that these should have a secondary character like Challenger, but that character should be slightly more complicated and use the deck in a more complicated way so that players can progressively get better with the deck and go to locals, go to a local qualifier and feel comfortable playing that character and not just getting stomped. Yeah. But I think yeah. this is a great new player product. I think it isn't for us, but we can see the benefits for it for onboarding. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like these are decks you could take to locals and play so far, right? And you might not win many games, but you'll at least play games, right? You'll get a um, you you most likely get a fifty fifty, which is great for any deck, really. Yeah, like you know, say so you you could take this to a locals, you could play games with it, you you can have fun, you might win some, you you probably you're gonna lose against most standard decks because they're a standard deck and not just a pre-con, but you can play games with them, right? I don't know. If you draw a hot with Jin, you might be able to turn to a seven-hander and have some fun. Oh, I'm not saying you can't win games with them. I'm just saying it's, it's you know, it's unlikely, especially as, like, a new player, right, and then, like, yeah. with the, the starter deck product. But you can engage in games with them at the locals and have fun with it. Um, oh, that makes sense. Uh, I think we're, that's, we've done all 20 cards that we've been given. Uh, mm -hmm. Have we got anything else that we need to touch on that we can touch on in a minute? Uh, no, nothing else for me other than just to once again say thank you to UVS Games for, for letting us share these cards with you. Uh, and obviously, thanks so much to uh, Apple, the, uh, the number two judge in the UK. I'm sorry, Murray still has a, the top place in my heart. But uh, yeah, very, very much. I think I don't have an issue there. I mean, yeah. definitely number two judge because there's no way Murray would skip out an event just because it was his wedding anniversary. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, thanks so much for, for, for joining us this evening. And yeah, I guess any, any final uh, thoughts on, on these from yourself, Apple? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be getting a hold of this product. Um, I'm excited for all the announcements that are coming out, like UBS Games are really asked couple of months have been knocking out of the park with some of the comms coming out. Um and so I think very excited for sort of seeing what's going to be happening in the near future with the competitive play, all the different IPs and stuff. So looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm just recording a video myself where I'm just talking about the fact that UBS is on an unprecedented win streak at the minute. The new products look amazing, all the accessories that they're coming out look amazing. 
they're fulfilling on what they're telling us they're doing rather than to change it and them listening to us as well as making changes to organized play and other things that reflect what players have been asking for it's really really good to see and they told us they want to be the best card game in the world and it looks like they're making the steps to fulfill that promise uh, we'll leave it on that positive note because I think mm-hmm. after that Richard will just have to be nothing but salty to sort of like balance us out so I'll let him do that in his own time thanks for everyone for joining thank you resident gin expert and number one gin player in the EU Apple for joining us uh, if we have any more tech and stuff we'll, be, we'll definitely make sure to tap you and make sure that we can get your opinions and We'll be back on Sunday with our top 10 foundations currently in standard with UBS Hermit. Anything yeah, from you, so Richard? Yeah. No, nothing else for me. So, yeah, as always, obviously, people watching Twitch, thank you very much for joining. And if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you very much. Uh, always much appreciated. Do all the uh, algorithm things. It really helps. So comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Helps the channel. Takes a few minutes. Press the buttons. Bye. But other than that, we'll catch you next time.